the Browns, you know, it, it's weird. They kind of got hit hard numbers wise, I guess, by opt outs, Mary Kay, but really only one really significant player opted out. And that was Andrew Billings. Other than that, you know, they lost some guards, but I don't think anybody that we had circled as maybe potential starters. But uh, were, were there any surprises to you as, as we hit the opt-out deadline? No, no surprises whatsoever. And again, as you mentioned, Andrew Billings is the only player that I think was really going to, to have significant playing time this season. I think he was going to be a key part of the, de the, of the defensive tackle rotation. And who knows? I mean, I don't think he would have landed a starting job, but I, I think that he would have made a strong case to be out there a lot based on, uh, you know, his play in the past, his, his PFF grades and things like that. So uh, that, that one was a little bit of a surprise early on. And um, other than that, I mean, again, you've got backup, backup guards that we're going to try to maybe challenge for the starting job, but really you've got Wyatt Teller and Nick Harris uh, that will be vying for the right guard job. So they didn't really lose anybody else where they're wondering. It's not like the Patriots where they lost some significant starters and they are go going to be scrambling to try to figure out uh, how to cover for those guys. But thank you for mentioning Nick Harris among the guards. I've been trying to push this over and over and over again that I don't believe the Browns actually drafted a backup center. With that being said on uh, Andrew Billings, I think like Mary Kay said, that one's going to hurt. I Watching tape on him, it feels like he was brought in specifically to be a, a Baltimore Ravens run stopper. He, he's, a, he's a three technique that can uh, play inside and, and, and pin down when need, needed. He's not a big sack numbers guy, but he just he takes up space. Uh, he, he is assignment sound, not afraid to you know, take on the double teams. Not, afraid's not the right word. He respects his assignment, takes the double teams, and frees up guys like, you know, Miles Garrett and Olivier Vernon on the ends to go after the ball carrier. I think that's going to hurt. I don't know if Jordan Elliott's ready, uh, the rookie out of Missouri uh, defensive lineman, is ready to be what Andrew Billings is. I just think watching tape, they're two different players. Uh, one's 22 years old. The other is going to be 25. One plays at, like, 325 pounds. The other being Elliott plays at probably, like, 305 pounds. So that, that, that run stopper – up front, the early down, first and second down guy isn't on the Browns roster right now. It just puts more pressure on Sheldon Richardson, but he's used to it uh, considering how things ended last year. And I expect another big year from him, but Billings has to be the big name. As for the other guys, it's going to be, and I know this narrative has been floating around the league and I, and I don't mean it in a, uh, a negative sense, but it's going to be interesting with the privilege of hindsight to see how many of these guys who ended up opting out may have gotten cut anyway. Um, I know that's a, a speculative thing, but some of the guys probably weren't going to be um, along for the ride regardless. And that's what makes Billings really the only big name to, to notice and how they replace him. I'm not sure. And week one, it might show right away if the Ravens, you know, rush for 200 plus yards on Joe Woods in that first time defense. Yeah. This team's going to get tested immediately. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, Billings is a guy that I really – I was looking forward to, to seeing this year. I, I thought it was a really good signing, you know, like you, Ellis, when I, I kind of went back and watched him play. It was like, okay, I see this guy in the backfield. I see this guy as, a, like, a legit run stopper. But at the same time, you know, it is a position where they have depth. Uh, you know, they drafted Jordan Elliott because he's a guy that can create pressure up the middle. Uh, Ogan Joby has, has been up and down, but when he's good, he's really good. Uh, and Sheldon Richardson, I thought – I mean, you could make the case – he was one of the Browns' best defensive players, not named Miles Garrett last year. So I, I think that's a, at least a position where they have depth. When you do look at all those guards, Mary Kay, even though none of those guys were necessarily guys that we had circled as that guy can win the job, th does it still change anything from a competition standpoint? You know, I don't – the only thing is I think that Drew Forbes would have at least – made a little noise there. I think he would have been third, uh, probably third on the depth chart in terms of trying to pin down that job or vie for that job. And I know that uh, there are some people that thought very highly of him heading into this season that maybe he could actually make a run for that starting job. So he's, you know, he's somebody that I think was a disappointment for them. And here's what will happen now. I mean, they are going to have to look uh, for some depth and they will, because you can fill up your practice squad even with 16 guys. So They'll, they will look for depth at guard for sure. Uh, and they will also look for depth 
on the defensive line and at linebacker. 